Thanks for tuning into another episode of the Unlockable Podcast. This is the December 2021 episode. I know I mentioned that we'd be doing a wintry themed episode, but hey, I guess we're not. Hannah and I are talking about the Game Awards, and we're also taking a look back at what happened in the world of gaming in 2021. Give the show a good rating wherever you're listening to it, and let's do it. Welcome back to the Unlockable Podcast. I'm Christian, and joining me as always is the Game Girl Advance herself. Hello. I'm so sorry. The Game Girl Advance SP. How could I? Dude. How could I? You have the backlight and everything. Man. It's all right. It's all right. Uh, Hannah, how, how the heck are you? I'm good. School's out. I've been doing nothing but sleeping in and playing games. You'll be glad to hear. Sleeping in, huh? <laughs> yeah, sleeping in, staying up real absurdly late and then sleeping in, but don't tell my parents that because they will not be happy. But They'll yeah. frown upon you and cast judgment. I know. I'm so lazy. <laughs> all I do is sit around and play games all day. But yeah, that's been my life. What about you? Uh, Yeah, I just go to work and I come home and I play the heck out of video games. My Xbox has been nonstop um, running in all of my free time and i i don't think i've played another console since i got it a month ago very happy it makes me very happy that's good to hear and it's like i i wish i could tell you that i'm doing other things but yeah that's my life i'm not really doing anything (laughs) else (laughs) just not (laughs) uh but let's just get into it then i guess since both of us are boring people um what are you what are you buying what are you playing um whatever you want to do first i will say i've been buying nothing because christmas is right around the corner so you never know what i'll get or what sales will come after christmas um well what about oh go ahead so yeah i'm just kind of holding off on buying anything at the moment what about black friday i think that came after our last episode um for black friday no, I think I talked about it. I got Monster Hunter Rise. Um, I got... What else did I get? I get Neo, The World Ends With You, because that was on sale. Um, I think that's it. Uh, that's really all that I got. There wasn't really that much there. Oh, you know what? I did get another one. I got Shin Megami Tensei Five. Oh, yeah. Um, because it was on sale. It was like $36, and it's the Steelbook Edition. So I was like, heck yeah. Why not? Plus, I was telling you that I really wanted to get into an RPG, like just a really long, grindy RPG. I was about um, to bring that up and scold you. Yep. Well, and then uh, dummy me got it sent to my parents' house instead of my apartment. Oh. So it's been there for like a week and a half. <laughs> <laughs> and I've not been able to play it. Um, but instead of playing that one, I have been playing Bug Fables, which is the Paper Mario kind of game. Um Nice. It's okay. It It's not bad. It's just not, like, it's just not Paper Mario. I know that sounds stupid, but, like, the Paper Mario games, especially Paper Mario 64, which is my favorite. I talk about that a lot. It starts with, like, some grandiose adventure, right? Where, like, there's some big mystery that you have to solve. And this one's just, like, yeah. Like, in Paper Mario 64, you get invited to a party, and Bowser, like, takes over the party, right? And he captures peach and then he like kicks you out of his castle that rises up from the bottom of peach's castle like how epic is that right that's the beginning of the game and this one it sounds like, like every mario i've ever played right exactly but it's still <laughs> it's still like ooh, like i wonder what's gonna happen next and then he kind of like kicks your butt and kicks you out of the castle and then whatever i don't want to spoil too much but that's the beginning of that and then in this one bug fables just kind of like we need you to find this sapling and then that's it I guess you had your head, you know, you you were really aiming for one thing when you turned that on and it was for it to be like Paper Mario because that's what you heard for months. Yeah. So I could see why you might be a little disappointed. It yeah. I mean it's fine. I'm still gonna play through it through it. It's not bad. It's just it's just different. Um and then other than that, I've been playing the heck out of Splatoon two again. I don't know why I decided to play it because I know I'll just get addicted to it as soon as I do. It's one of those games. And I've been playing it, like, nonstop. <laughs> Dang. Been up till uh, the wee hours of the night playing Splatoon, huh? 
I have. And the best part is people are playing it around the clock because, you know, time zones yeah. and all that. But <laughs> so there's never like not a match that you can get into. But I will say, so last time we talked about Splatoon 2, we were talking about like how we wanted things to be different for Splatoon 3. Um, so uh, one of my big complaints was that you can't do like all of the courses at the same, like, you know, like consecutively yeah. at the same time if you want. It's like every two hours or whatever it is, like the course has changed. There's only two that you can pick from. Well, yep. I was thinking that this isn't necessarily a bad thing because like every two hours... I'll play and then I'll play for like a good 20, 25 minutes and be like, all right, I'm tired of these two courses. So then I'm just going to come back in the next two or three hours and do the other two courses and the other two courses and the other two courses. And that's how I stay up till gajillion times. You know, I do gajillion matches and stay up so late. So I don't know if that's what they were going for with that, but that's kind of where I'm at with that. They were after, uh, they were after kids losing sleep is what you're telling me. Yeah, pretty much, because I look forward to, like, the next two courses that are going to be up. Like, oh, man, well, it's, it's whatever clock. That means two new courses are going to be up. And I don't I don't agree with you. Well, I didn't <laughs> I didn't think that you would. Most people don't. But it's just, that's what I'm experiencing right now. It would be nice to play all of them, like Mario Kart. But, like, it, it also gives me something to look forward to. I'm sure that, that wasn't said, their intention, though. That being said, I do love the game, and I would love for you to text me, because I would love to play with you, so just let me know. I will, indeed. Um, <clears> and <throat> then the last game I played, which is Yee's Origin, which is the limited run game that took forever to get to me, and then I put it off, put it off, put it off, and I decided to play it, um, finally. And actually, it's actually tragic. The only reason why I decided to play it is because I had time, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to play Metroid Dread, I'm going to start it right now. And then I realized I didn't have it with me. I was at my parents' house at the time. I was like, oh, this is the perfect opportunity. And I blew it. <laughs> so then I played Yee's Origin. It's really good. But it's like, it's not like the grandiose adventure like the other Yee's games are. It's very like shrunken down. It's just more like a dungeon crawler. It's not like an open world or anything like that. But it's fun. There's I played through one character. There's another character that you can play through. And I think if you beat the game with playing both of those two characters, there's the third one you can play through. So it's got, like, you can play through it three times and get, like, a different story every time, which is interesting. But I probably won't pick up, pick it up again for a while. But, yeah, It'll be ready it. for you whenever you do come back, though. That's cool. Yep. I didn't realize that when I first bought it. It was fun. Just you different. You finished it? I did finish it with that one character, yes. Nice. It's very fun. And that's pretty much it. Well, I have been saving my money for Christmas presents, but I uh, did buy a few games for myself. Um, GBA and GameCube say it every podcast, but specifically, I got DK King of Swing complete in box. Not rare at all. There's like pallets of these games just stacked up, it seems like. <laughs> uh, mine's CIB, though. And, yeah, that's a cool one to have. Another Nintendo property off the list. I got X-Men Reign of Apocalypse, which I am very happy about because I was looking for that game for a long time. I had a save search on eBay for probably a year, maybe over a year. And then some seller just happened to have two of them at once. And they were 30 bucks, And I was like, okay, I guess I'll take this now. For um, what platform? This is a GBA title. Mm. um i did play it actually a year ago i had the game loose and just wanted to play it pretty basic as far as i'm concerned a very basic um beat em up game but yeah i do love the cover art on it and i always love adding some superhero games to the collection very marvel nice. ultimate alliance 2 on the topic of superhero games i got it's for the I got it for the Wii, and it's a variant that comes with a comic book, a freaking comic book of Civil War, I think, like issue one or something, and it's like mini and fits inside the Wii case, and I love that crap. I freaking love it. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I got a couple of Black Friday pickups. I got Far Cry Six, and. Started, I played that maybe a couple hours. It's my first Far Cry game, and I really like it. Uh, it reminds me of the, the modern Tomb Raider titles, where it's pretty open world. 
and there's like side missions and the main stuff and it's pretty cool um definitely been sidetracked with the other games i've been playing but i do want to finish that one and um probably early 2022 pretty cool game very nice and the other black friday pickup was call of duty vanguard I was really excited to play this, and I hate it. I actually am going <laughs> to sell it. I, <laughs> I'm this guy that's like, I'm this guy that's always saying like, oh yeah, Call of Duty is the same every year. It doesn't matter. Like, like when people tell me, oh, I don't like this Call of Duty. I don't like this one. It's just like I'm I'm the guy who's like, no, like they're literally the same game, but they change the era that you're playing in. Like this one's World War Two, buddy. Like it's the same <laughs> game. And then I got this game, and it's not the same, and I'm going to sell it. I kid you not. I'm not a fan. And so. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> um, the last thing I want to mention is I got my first PS5 game, and I, I don't have a PS5, but this game is in the vein of Cooking Mama, I guess. It's uh, 3D Billiards, and I didn't write the full name down, but it's called 3D Billiards. And it is a it has a freaking misprint on the box art. Thought about making a video, but I guess I'm not going to. Um, the The side of the box says it's like oh why didn't I freaking write it down? It's like Panda Hero Remastered is what the side oh, of the box says. I did see that somewhere. <laughs> so I bought that for fifteen dollars on GameStop's website. And I'm just keeping it sealed. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it was cheap and I couldn't pass it up. Wow. How did they <laughs> mess that up? That's so funny. I mean, it's I like the, the, the Panda game is from that publisher, I guess. But that's like the most defense that I can give them for that. <laughs> <laughs> that's insane. All right. Been playing... This past weekend, I had some friends over, and I thought it'd be cool to start this new Teen Titans game I got on the GameCube. <gasps> I love Teen Titans. I, you haven't played this? I have not played that one, no. We can try it when you come to Texas if you want, but honestly, I was not a big fan. Um, no, why? It's basically just your your typical beat em up your 3D beat em up where you run around... like. It seemed like the 2000s had a ton of these games, whether it be Nickelodeon, Marvel, like there were so many of them. Um, and I, I don't know. I played it for a good 30, 45 minutes with my friends and I was bored. And I think Aww. they were bored as well. <laughs> Man. But uh, yeah, probably won't be popping that one back in unless you decide that you want to play between our rounds of Kirby Air Ride. Dude, heck yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. I already talked about Call of Duty Vanguard. Um, I beat Halo 5, so that was the last one, that my seventh Halo game of the year. The last one that my friend and I needed to play through before Infinite came out. And it was really in the 11th hour because we beat it the night before Infinite released. That was cool. Good lord. Seventh? Seventh game. And then, yeah, I've been playing the heck out of Halo Infinite really in love with that game both the campaign and the multiplayer fantastic um we'll talk more about it later and then forza horizon 5 still playing that from time to time just non-stop xbox around here wow so yeah do you have some news for us i do have some news for you but um so just me just uh yeah just for you so everyone else turn it off and then we'll come back <laughs> later okay so news not very many things but sony announced new colors of face plates and controllers for the ps5 if you have one um they're all like really pretty vibrant colors there's pink and blue and purple um are you gonna pick up those mr Xbox yeah to go with my to go <laughs> with my hd panda remastered <laughs> did you see um, them aren't they pretty colors Oh, it's so cool that a company would do that. I mean, has that been done before where they're just like, hey, come change your, your color of your console? I guess the 360 had faceplates. I know that. I don't know, but they're very nice colors. But they're like $50, just the faceplates themselves, which I guess isn't that surprising. Um, There's customs out there, and I think Sony sued people. They did! Were, yeah. <laughs> they sued them. 
So that uh, that makes sense. Marbles is up from her nap, everybody. <laughs> I hear um, her. The next thing is Nintendo announced that there will be an Indie World presentation tomorrow as of recording this, December 15th. It'll probably already be out by the time you listen to this episode. But, yep. Pay I attention to that. your indies, man. Um... Next thing, we were talking about it earlier, but Paper Mario 64 is now out on Nintendo Switch Online with the expansion pack as of December 10th. Um, definitely jump on that one if you haven't played it already. And then, this is just kind of like an update thing, but I just saw this and it was like just some random person on Twitter posted it. But you remember the um, ports that we wanted episode and we we're like naming all these ports that we wanted? Mm-hmm. Go listen to that one if you haven't. Dot hack slash slash G dot you last recode is coming to the switch that's one of the ones that i wanted oh heck yeah they listen to our show i guess so (laughs) isn't (laughs) that exciting that's like very cool that's like the fourth port on that list that i wanted to come over i bet i'm at zero what I bet I'm at zero if I were to go back and listen oh, to that. Oh, you're definitely at zero. Mine were at least <laughs> realistic. <laughs> Mine were games that came out 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Bam. But yeah, that's all I got for the news. Just wanted to update. I think that's so exciting. Very cool. Very cool. Um, I guess that's it. I didn't write any news down. No news, man. Come on. All right, let's do it. Uh, The Game Awards is... One of our main topics today. Um, hmm. So we live texted, like always, for these types of things, and it was it was a thing that happened. Do you want to tell us how long the show was, Hannah? <laughs> okay. Well, the show itself was like three ish hours, but then there was like a pre-show, which is like a half an hour. So this thing was like four hours. That's a long presentation. That's a long show, man. Four hours. And we're going to break it down for you guys in like 20 minutes, maybe. Maybe less. So Definitely you don't less. have to go back and watch the Game Awards. <laughs> nope. <laughs> All right. Well, just give wouldn't. me your general. What would you say? I said and most people probably wouldn't. <laughs> they were not very happy with it. Give me an overall break not a breakdown um just like a couple words of how you felt about the show how i felt about it um i was really excited for it in the beginning um and then as it went on i got less excited <laughs> <laughs> is that good uh, if i were to choose one word i'd say it was kind of disappointing um but yeah let's talk about things that we liked we disliked talk about the games that we're excited for and yeah we can go through everything that was announced the awards themselves let's do it all right starting with the pre-show announcements i'm gonna go through a few and then i'm gonna hand it off to you all right uh just stop me talk about anything you want to talk about though babylon's fall revealed a new trailer and it's coming out march 3rd chivalry 2 we got some dlc coming never heard of that one (laughs) (laughs) Evil West, a gameplay trailer was revealed for their launch next year. And this one I thought looked pretty interesting. Have a Nice Death. It's coming out March 2022. It's an indie game and it is definitely a Metroidvania, which indies seem to be the best at those. They are always popping those out. Um, will I pick it up? I don't no. know. <laughs> <laughs> be honest no yeah i hardly buy modern games yeah you're right i'm just gonna hit him with a no but if it comes <laughs> out to xbox game pass you know i'm gonna play it that's oh all i gosh. need take it xbox away Xbox game pass is ruining you <laughs> all right I don't even, i'm not even a collector i just play digital games out here you just play freaking game pass how can that's you call right. yourself a collector <laughs> anyway. i bought a ps5 game anyway. i don't even have a ps5 <laughs> Anyway, we got Homeworld 3, which is a new gameplay trailer, and a quarter four 2022 release window was announced. No, nothing about those. Um, King of Fighters. I should know that Roman numeral, and I oh, don't. Boy. <laughs> is it 15? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll add, should know that name, Cronin. 
Cronin as next fi- fighter. Thank you for handing that one off to me. <laughs> Spelled K R O H N E N. Cronin, right? Cronin. Uh, yeah, that's what I would have said. As next fighter. Um, I didn't realize that there were 14 King of Fighters before this. This was my first time <laughs> hearing of that. Um, then we got Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, which was announced earlier, but it showed us like a whole new trailer and whatnot. It's scheduled for this summer, which is dumb because summer is next year, right? <laughs> We're in winter now. Yeah. <laughs> For next summer. Um, not a brand new game, but it's like a significant expansion to the game. People are speculating that it's going to almost be like another game um, added on to the base game, which is exciting. Um, then we got Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, which is a fighting game, to my disappointment. Um, scheduled <laughs> for March 17th. I yeah, I got March the 17th. text messages, the live emotions of like, Oh my gosh, it's Persona. And then like the, the downfall of it being a fighter. Well, they freaking done, did done diddly dirt, <laughs> done be dirty, okay? Because they, sh- they showed like the 25th anniversary logo and I was like, oh my God, it's going to be like some kind of cool collection. But of course it wasn't. It's just a fighting game. I know nothing about these fighting games, right? I mean, I don't really care about fighting games. It's not my thing. Yeah. But I was very disappointed when they announced that. Um, then we got Planet of Lana. Or Lana, whatever one you decide you want. It was a trailer revealed. It's a cinematic puzzle adventure framed by an epic sci-fi saga that stretches across centuries and galaxies. Didn't write that. Stole it from the internet. Um, it looked really good. It looked really interesting. It wasn't like a... Um, it's obviously not like a AAA title or anything like that. It's more closely to indie, but it looked really good. Um, you want to read the rest? You're giving me this one because it's uh, my home state of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mm-hmm. Howdy. Game revealed. I, I don't even remember this one, Hannah. You don't remember this one? How could you not remember <laughs> this one? It was it was literally like a 10 second clip and there's like this poor guy like bleeding out to death. And then it the camera like shifts up and it's all like dark and sketchy. And it's the guy with like the skin face for a face like that. I want to wear your what? face is my face face. <laughs> I was a little late to the pre-show, so maybe that's why. Yeah, you probably were. But yep, that was uh that scared me. The Expanse game adaptation coming from Telltale. Didn't even know that company was still in business. I thought they died. Uh <laughs> not the people, but the company. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> Thirsty Suitors announced and Tunic coming March sixteenth. Okay. That one was fun. I don't know if you missed that one or not, but it's like a cute little Zelda-like action-adventure kind of deal, and like your character is a cute little fox. Very reminiscent of A Link to the Past or Minish Cap. Nice. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at the thumbnail for the YouTube video, and it looks like Zelda. Yep, that's pretty much it. It's very cute, though. Can't go wrong with foxes as the main character. No. All right, after the pre-show, we got the real show. A Plague Tale Requiem. Now, I don't know if this is a sequel to another game called A Plague Tale, but the story itself looked pretty interesting. showed new footage, and there was a 2022 release date announced. Um, Yeah, I I don't know. I like like history, and that game looked like an interesting story. I like history. (laughs) All right. That's all the time we have for episode 23. Where can the people find you? (laughs) Alan Wake 2 announced. That's a big deal, I think, for people who like Alan Wake. I think that was a big deal. Uh, (laughs) Among Us VR, Hannah. Okay, you gonna play it on your toy cons? Super fun, by the way. I love Among Us. I know you don't like it very much, but it is super fun. So I think VR. I think if you have a bunch of friends who have VR, which I don't, um, I think they still think that would be really cool. I, uh, yeah, I know I'm the minority there, but I'm sure VR would be awesome. I really am not a big VR person, but I think if Nintendo ever made VR, I would totally be there. I agree. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I, me, my aunt took me to a, um, VR, I don't know if it's called like a VR arcade, but it's basically just like some nerd in a basement and he's got like a bunch of VR machines and I actually put on the, um. What is the PlayStation one called? Just PlayStation I think it's just VR. called, yeah, yeah. I put one of those on, and it was really fun. Hmm. Did you play Iron Man? 
No, I played Beat Saber and I played whatever one of the Star Warses that was out. Hmm. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. I would definitely get into VR if Nintendo ever decided to do that. Besides like the Labo VR. Arc Raiders from Embark Studios. Nothing. All right. We got Crossfire <laughs> X. <laughs> this one I wrote down and I don't remember a thing about it, but I wrote down that it looked interesting. Did you write anything for that one? Nope. Sweet. Uh, Cuphead DLC, the delicious last course is coming out June 30th. I looked now into it a little. was fun. That was a fun little trailer oh, teaser yeah. thing. It was like yeah. it was like old time like cartoons. It's not like it's not stop motion, is it? And it's not like claymation, but it's I don't know. It just looked like fun and old timey. Yeah. It was very unique. Yep. I totally wasn't even gonna mention that. I'm glad you brought that up. But it was like they did that and then they had the, the women in the flapper just dresses. Uh, singing on stage singing oh, yeah in fr- that was in so front fun. of the orchestra that was awesome and then i told you fashion has died <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> um okay so yeah i'm definitely gonna play this i i loved cuphead years ago when i played it and i looked into it i guess this has been announced and people have been waiting for it for like a long time so pretty cool to see a release date even though it's freaking seven months away yeah that's gotta sting a little <clears throat> but at least they have a date Destiny 2 The Witch Queen. I think we both saw this and were pretty impressed by it, despite never having played Destiny. Yep. I looked at it and I was like, wow, this game not only looks amazing, but the story was really interesting. Couldn't couldn't tell you what it was, but it was interesting in the moment. Agreed. Dokev Rockstar. Oh my gosh. (laughs) You remember this one? Yes. This was the random like dance party thing. And it Dude, lasted. I don't know. If that's your thing, that's <laughs> fine. But like, it was really random, and it lasted for like fifteen minutes. And I was like, I kind of hate this. <laughs> I don't know what this is. <laughs> it was just kind of like a, kind of like a mood killer, you know. I uh, I don't know that what sounds the heck bad. that was. The I'm graphics were you. very strange. I'm not judging you for your taste if that's your thing, but it just it just came out of nowhere, um, <laughs> and it was just very different. Moving on, Dune Spice Wars. You got thoughts on that one? No. Well, actually, I did write some stuff down. It basically was just kind of like a reveal trailer, but um, it's a real-time strategy game, obviously based on the book. Um, Did you watch the movie? Did you watch the new Dune movie? No. Oh, man. <laughs> I heard it, it was, was like okay. three hours. It was really long, and it was it was all right. That's all I got to say. It's just all right. Dying Light 2, Stay Human. That's on my list that I will probably pick up in 2022. It's uh, zombies. Zombies. (laughs) Of course it is. (laughs) Why don't you take the next, I don't know, the rest of them. The rest of them? Okay, I can do that. So next is Elden Ring, which I know a lot of people are excited about, and I know nothing about it. I'm going to pick it up, I think. It's going to be like the biggest game. If it's on Game Pass. No, no, no. It'll be one of the few games I spend money on that comes out next year. I think uh, it's out in February, and it's just going to be one of those games that's like everybody's talking about it. It's going to probably be game of the year. Like, it's just going to be amazing, apparently. So I'm going to have to try it out. Very nice. <clears throat> next thing got me all excited and then was disappointed again. Um, Fall Guys <laughs> revealed Nightmare Before Christmas skins. So uh, they had these really cool, like, Nightmare Before Christmas characters on screen. And I texted you and I was like, oh, my God, that's so cool. It's going to be something Disney related. And it's like, nope, psych, it's just skins <laughs> for Fall Guy. Um, so that was How exciting. random. How random would it have been if we got a Nightmare Before Christmas game? It would have been random, but at least it's better than skins. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> anyway, then we have Final Fantasy VII Remake. I know that Roman numeral. <laughs> Intergrade coming for PC on December 16th. Um, I don't know what's going on with this game. I thought this was supposed to be like an episodic thing. Is this like the next episode or is this like DLC? Well, from what I know, I don't know why it says Intergrade, but I know that the fact that it's coming to PC should be a brand new thing. 
because it's only been on PlayStation for the last year, year and a half or whatever. Oh. So, yeah, and I saw a headline that it's going to be $70 on PC and people are freaking out about Holy that. Holy moly. But that's what modern games cost on Game console Pass? at least. <laughs> Next is Forspoken. Got a release date of May 24th. Know nothing about that one? Nope. Then we have Fortnite Chapter 3 showed a new trailer, which honestly looked fun as heck. It's got Spider-Man. And you get to swing around like Spider-Man. <laughs> and it's a new map, and it makes it like a new game, which is very exciting. I don't think um, I can dive back in. <laughs> I know that if I do dive back in, it's going to be like a Splatoon 2 situation, and I'm going to be like super addicted to it. Um, so I'm really trying not to, but it looks very fun. Um, then we have, <clears throat> let's see, how does she pronounce it? Genshin? Genshin Impact? Genshin. <laughs> Genshin Impact. <laughs> Genshin Impact showed off a new character, Arataki Ito. I don't know what that is. That's a new character. I'm really ex- excited that I heard that it might be coming to the Switch at some point, because it's not on there now. Is that but, like, is it a, like a, I don't even know anything about this game. Is it just like a never ending game? It seems I don't like people know. are playing it for a long time. All right. Well, if we don't both don't know, then forget it. It's just, we both know that it's not Genshin. 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 Oh, they set her up. <laughs> um, And then we have GTFO, which is available right now at 24% off. Wow. I don't know if that's still a thing, but it was. Then we have a Halo TV series footage revealed, which actually looks surprisingly good. I think it was Paramount Plus. Paramount Plus. Is what it was coming out on, but it looks surprisingly Mm -hmm. good, didn't it? Yeah, it did. I'll be there. And then we have Hellblade 2 trailer revealed, which is the game um, where they're going into that like creepy dark cave and they're trying to kill that giant thing that's coming after the girl. Or the woman. Oh yeah, that was a like really good trailer. Really, that was creepy as heck, though. <laughs> we don't know what happens to the to the giant eater killer. Like, what happens? <laughs> Just gotta play the game to find out. Um. Then there's Horizon Forbidden West showed a new trailer. Know nothing about that. Yep, that's the game, the sequel to the game that launched the same day as Breath of the Wild, and was very. Um, similar to it, wasn't it? It was like machines and like a post-apocalyptic whatever. Yeah, it's very overshadowed. And then we have Lost Ark announced a release date of February 11th. Uh, Metal Hell Singer revealed. Nightingale revealed, which I looked into a little bit more. It's a shared world survival crafting game set in an all new fantasy (laughs) universe. Um, and it looks like you can travel through like portals into different worlds, which I think is really interesting. But I, the shared shared world part does that mean like what one player does, everyone can see it kind of deal? It's a good question. It's on my uh, it's on my list of games that were interesting from this event, though. Oh really? Yeah, but I don't know. Now that you've said like fourteen different adjectives describing it, I'm not sure how I feel about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll read that again. It's a shared world survival crafting game. <laughs> Guess I'll just keep an eye on it. Mm-hmm. See if it looks interesting down the road. Then we have PUBG going free to play announced. Do people still play that? Is that a thing? I didn't know it wasn't free to play. Yeah, I don't know. Don't know what that is. Um, then we have this is for you. You want to pick this one up? <laughs> Rocket League Sideswipe. They've had like two or three <laughs> commercials for this throughout the event. Um, I don't know. If I were to play mobile games, definitely would be on my radar. <laughs> Game Pass? <laughs> Rumbleverse, Epic Games' new platform fighter. Uh, yeah, we were looking at this and we were like, wow, that's Fortnite. <laughs> it's basically Fortnite. Saints Row. What is that, a sequel? Good question. Saints Row. Yep, this YouTube thumbnail is not helping me. Pretty sure it's a sequel. And I've never played any of them, so we're going to move on. Slitterhead. That was the Silent Hill guy, right? Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. So the guy who, I guess, made Silent Hill has left, or I guess he's probably been gone from Konami or whatever. And he's, he's, you know what? 
not gonna try to sound like an expert, but it said like, hey, this guy made Silent Hill, now he's making Slitterhead, and yeah, looked uh, looked very disturbing to tell you the truth. It did look disturbing. Day one pickup. No. Somerville, which some might pronounce differently. Um, I don't I would remember say that Somerville, one at all. but. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Sonic Frontiers. You said this game looked bad. I thought it looked okay. What is it? Breath of the Wild with Sonic? Like, I don't even know what I was watching. It looked bad to me. I thought it looked okay. See, I'm also a fan of, like, what is it? The Secret Rings and whatever that other one was. I really liked those games when I was younger. Hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully I'm picking it up day one. Then there was the Sonic 2 movie trailer. Looks like a fun time. Mm-hmm. I like the first one, so I'm kind of excited for the second one. It's got Tails and Knuckles and uh, Eggman with a really big mustache. <laughs> yep. People are hyped for that one. It'll be a good time. Star Trek Resurgence. I don't remember that one. Oh, it's Telltale. That's why I don't remember it. Ooh, ouch. Do you like those games? No. I mean, I've Telltale played, games? I've never played a Telltale game. Okay. Well, I will continue roasting them then. <laughs> Star Wars Eclipse. Count me in for that one. That, that was, was cool. fun looking. I don't know where it falls in the timeline, though. Are you a big Star Wars guy? Not big at all. Uh, fell off the wagon, definitely, but used to be a big Star Wars guy. Man, that game looked really good, though. Yeah, I'm definitely in for that one. Uh, that was a big surprise for me. I didn't mm-hmm. even—I don't remember who was publishing it. Probably EA. Monolith. No, I don't know. I can't remember. Steel Rising revealed for a 2022 release. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Suicide Squad: <laughs> Kill the Justice League. That was that really a, an announced game? Oh, it was just a trailer, I guess. Yeah. I guess more like a more in-depth looked. Um, it looked good. I mean, I don't have any reason to not like it. It's definitely not going to come to the Switch unless it comes like via cloud, but I can admire it from afar. <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy came to Switch. I feel like that was a pretty big game. Via cloud, yeah. So it's possible. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I'm definitely interested in that one. Definitely going to pick that one up. Do you want to take the rest of these? Sure. Thanks for giving me the hard ones. We have Synced Off Planet. Showed you are new trailer. such a brat, bro. I swear. <laughs> then we have Chi Tachia, Tachia, um, <laughs> whatever that one is, man. T C H I A Tachia, Chia, Chia, Tachia. Anyway, Ch-ch-ch-chia. this is a game that I thought looked like like a Breath of the Wild kind of Wind Waker thing. There's sailing and there's gliding with like a paraglider, but you can do like cool flips in the air. So that's fun. Um, there's also a slingshot and it looks like there's some sort of magic mechanic. Um, and you're exploring an island. That's pretty much all I got from the trailer. Um, so, yep. And then we got the Lord of the Rings Gollum showed a new trailer. Um, and they somehow made Gollum look even creepier than in the movies, which is amazing. Totally random announcement, but I'm in. Looks cool. It did look very interesting. Then there's also The Matrix Awakens, available now for next-gen consoles. Um, then the next one looked was pretty cool. You told me I what a dork or something. I don't remember. Tiny Tina's Wonderland showed a story trailer. Uh, it's an action role-playing... <clears throat> hold on. <clears throat> Let me get this right. An action role-playing first-person shooter <laughs> video game developed by Gearbox Software and published by 2K Games. Um, it is a spin-off... Uh, in the Borderlands series and is a successor to Borderlands 2 Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep you don't know why I roasted you why you you really don't know why it's because you said the game looks whimsical like after the guy in the trailer said like the word whimsical three times and I was like <laughs> shut the heck up <laughs> <laughs> it looks very I thought whimsical. you were just being dumb <laughs> <laughs> no look I liked it it looked fine the art I agree. style is kind of like if Astral Chain and like Telltale, Telltale kind of like made their characters, you know what I'm saying? It's like kind of comic booky, but also like not. I don't know if you remember what they looked like, but 
It looked good. Looks like uh, looks like all the other Borderlands games, Hannah. Yep. I know, looks but good, I just though. wanted to describe it a little bit, okay? <laughs> I've never played a Borderlands game. All right. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> then we have Warhammer 40,000. <clears throat> Space Marine 2 revealed. Um, And then... Dang it, can you can you do this one? Oh my gosh, two war two Warhammer games? Mm-hmm. Uh Vermintide 2 DLC Warrior Priest released. Mm-hmm. Re- uh yeah, released. Yeah. So I guess it's available now. Okay. Then there's Wonder <laughs> Woman game revealed, which looked amazing, by the way. So excited for Wonder Woman to actually get a game. She's been around for what? Forever? Forever her and movie, a half. Her movie made like a billion dollars and we're just now getting a video game. That was my favorite announcement of the show. And then last but not least, we have Vampire the Masquerade Blood Hunt, which is vampires. New trailer revealed. It's the supernatural, zombies. power-filled, free-to-play battle royale game is coming to PS5 and PC. Ooh. Well, that sounds yeah, interesting. I don't know. Do you get to be yeah. like werewolves and like vampire hunters and stuff, or like all Not magical any creatures? Werewolves. Oh, just vampires! Dang. Now the a supernatural hunt. battle royale. That's a good idea. <laughs> that would be good. I'd buy it. All right, that's what was announced, and what else we got here? The awards, right? The the awards part of the game awards. Yeah, not just the announcements. The actual awards themselves. We don't have to read all of them. I'm sure no one here is interested in like the esports and I'm sure people have already looked it up, but we can just talk about like I don't know, the best ones, obviously game of the year and whatever. Alright. Uh let's do Player's Choice. I don't even know what that means, but <laughs> Player's Choice was Halo Infinite. Mm-hmm. The best game direction was Death Loop. And best ongoing game, Final Fantasy fourteen. That's got to be a fourteen right there. Fourteen online. <laughs> These that are the beat, winners, right? Right, right. That beat Fortnite, Genshin Impact, Apex Legends, and Call of Duty Warzone. So I don't know. I don't know anybody that plays Final Fantasy fourteen, but I know a lot the of people, people that, that do Fantasy play 14. it. The, the people that do play it definitely voted. Because it's not easy to beat Fortnite, I'm telling you right now. Mm-mm. Best indie, Kena, Kenna, Bridge of Spirits. Never heard of it. Mm-hmm. Best debut indie, the same thing. Wow. Best narrative, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. That was cool. I was happy for them. That was cool. It beat out... Deathloop and Life is Strange True Colors and Psychonauts 2. Interesting. And it takes two. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy was that, that lady that came on stage. She she was like so happy. I just felt so happy for her. I don't even know the woman, but I was just like, good good job. Good for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, best art direction, Deathloop. Deathloop was doing good. I was really expecting it to win game of the year uh, just because of all the other awards it got. Hmm. Uh, best score in music near replicant i think that was near's only only nomination and only win you gotta read the whole name <laughs> yeah i noticed that even um jeff Keeley didn't even <laughs> didn't even bother with it nope all right you want to take some or all of the rest i can take all of the rest we have best audio design the winner was Forza Horizon 5, um, best performance. I don't know any of these people, but we got Maggie Robinson as Lady Dimitrescu. Dimitrescu? It's the tall lady in Resident Evil that everybody yeah, it's was the obsessed meme. with. It's the meme, but I don't know how to yeah. pronounce it. And it's from Resident Evil Village. Um, games for Impact, the winner was Life is Strange 2 Colors. Uh, best community support, again, Final Fantasy 14 Online. Then we have best mobile game, Genshin Impact. <laughs> Genshin Impact. Um, best AR VR, we have Resident Evil 4. Best action, Returnal. Best action adventure, Metroid Dread. 
Woo! Woo! Which unfortunately is the only thing that Nintendo won. <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. Best role playing game was Tales of Arise, which makes me really want to play that game. But of course, it's not on the Switch. Um, best fighting, we have Guilty Gear Strive. Best family, it takes two. Best sports racing, Forza Horizon 5. Hang on, we're going to talk about best family. There were four Nintendo titles, and it takes two beat them all. Mario, Pokemon, Mario again, and WarioWare. That was crazy to me. Um, Especially because I feel like no one talked about it takes two before this month. Yeah, I don't remember hearing anything about it either. But yeah, I guess I'm just not very clued in. What a strange year. Yeah, I think, well, see, for me, a Nintendo fan, I was like, I want Nintendo to win, but I played none of those games, so I don't know which one to vote for. If we all, like, got together as a community and was like, hey, this is the best family game for Nintendo. I mean, it's got four up there. But there's a reason why Nintendo lost, obviously, this category, and we'll get there in a second. Um, What am I at? Best racing in sports. We have Forza Horizon 5. I think I already said that. Um, Which beat out Hot Wheels Wheels Unleashed. (laughs) Hello? And Cruise and Blast wasn't even nominated. I have not heard anything good about that game. That's freaking blasphemy. Pun intended. <laughs> then we have Whimsical. Best... Yeah, it's a whimsical. <laughs> it's a whimsical racer. We have Best Sim in Strategy. We have Age of Empires 4. Um, best Multiplayer, it takes two. Beat out Monster Hunter Rise, unfortunately. Um, most Anticipated... Um, which was not Breath of the Wild 2, but it was Elden Ring. I voted Zelda. So did I. But uh, mm-hmm. Elden Ring was also the winner last year. That's pretty crazy. Oh, was it really? Uh-huh. He said, for the second year in a row. Yeah. Well, whoop de doo Then we have Innovation and Accessibility. We have Forza Horizon 5. That was a nice little segment. I did not that realize That was interesting. They, um... We're doing research and stuff like that. It's really interesting. One game um, had like sign language coming soon. I was like, wow, that's really awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, and then the rest ones are esports. I don't really care about that. But you want to announce the game of the year? You're going to give me the honors? I will give you the honor, yeah. It was Metroid Dread. Woo! Woo! It Takes Spike. Two was the uh, the game of the year. Yeah. Defied all odds. I think what they did was they must have had every person in that company make like 15 email accounts <laughs> and freaking <laughs> go and vote for that. Like it was part of their job. They all did it for, for eight hours. Y'all are going to get know, fired man. if we don't win. The game looks great. I'm definitely going to find someone to play with me and uh, it's it's going to be fun, I'm sure. But I seriously heard no one talk about it. Mm-mm. I didn't see I didn't ads for it. I didn't know it was a thing. At all. Yeah, it blew my mind. Uh, a lot of things... Uh, so a lot of these, like Resident Evil Village, that one was huge when it came out, but it doesn't even feel like it was 2021. So I think a lot of people have just got this like recency bias, is what I've heard it called. Um, and so, you know, they've played things more recently than they've played It Takes Two, or the opposite of what I just said. And, um, you know, they, they just forget and, you know, more recent games get their vote. I think that happens yeah, a lot. Definitely. Because it's just, it's fresh in their mind. So they're like, oh, yeah, that was fun. Or, yeah, I know that game. Yeah, you're definitely right. I mean, even when I was trying to freaking remember which games I'd played this year, it was like, oh, my God, I just, I cannot remember. And so, yeah. this was the game made by that guy that, Jeff Keighley's friend, who like I forgot what he did that was so famous a few he, like, years ago. Off the camera or something, or did something. Yeah, like that. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty interesting. Yeah, he's a character. <laughs> so yeah, those are the awards, and we just saved you four hours of your life. Yeah, you're welcome. What do we sum it up in like fifteen <laughs> minutes? What is next on the agenda for the Game Awards? Oh, we're going to talk about Just our, our thoughts. thoughts. Okay. Well, go ahead. Talk to me. What did you think of the Game Awards? Was it good? Did it suck? What did you want more of? I'm all ears. 
All right. So I thought overall it was okay. I mean, it's supposed to be like people are saying it's like the next, not the next E3, but it's like equivalent to like an E3. Um, I don't think that's true. I think um, people need to be a little more open about it. That it's, it's like it's about the awards as well. Um, and I think they need to do a better job of actually like acknowledging the awards instead of just like rapid firing firing them off in like the pre-show. That's um, true. So I don't know. It, it was it, it's four hours long. That's very long for an award show, right? I think they should, if they're going to keep it that long, they should, like, split it up um, into, like, okay, this is the awards, and, like, this might be, I don't know, what do you think? Like, this might be, like, some trailers, this might be some things we already know. If they're going to compare it to an E3, at least E3 is split up into, like, multiple days. It can't be called the Game Awards and then have sections that don't involve the awards. Like, I don't know. I don't think yeah. you could have a section for trailers. Like people would only tune in for those trailers. Nobody would care about the awards. Like you can't do that from like a business standpoint. So yeah, that's my thoughts yeah. on that. I guess you're probably right. Um, and then another thing I was want to talk about is I watched a lot of videos, like people's reactions and stuff to it, like a lot of YouTubers and stuff. And a lot of people were disappointed, which I guess I, I know it wasn't perfect. But they were saying, like, a lot of the stuff wasn't new or, like, it wasn't revealed there or um, they had all heard a lot about it before. Like, a lot of the things that were announced and showed off. I was like, that's really dumb. I mean, even things at E3 aren't necessarily all brand new, you know? I think every developer, like, deserves their time to shine on a big screen, you know? Not everyone can have a big E3 moment. Um, And most people like me, a lot of that stuff that was shown, I had no idea about it. It was new to me. And right, like so that think, it's working as an advertisement in that sense. Right. Like, I like to think that, I know I'm, I know a lot about gaming, right? But I'm not an expert, nor do I keep up with, like, everything. But a lot of that stuff that I saw was new to me. Yeah. And, and a lot of people, are, like, don't keep up with gaming, you know? Um, as much as, like, the YouTubers do or the people that watch their channels. Um, For sure. So I thought that was fine. I mean, not everything has to be new to make it entertaining. As long as you see something new or something different or I don't know, you're just exposed to new things, I think it's fine. Um, yeah, the things... Oh, the thing that I really like, though, is the live performances and the orchestra. I love that shit. Like, live music is so good to me. Like, me and my grandma, we went to... Um, well, I dragged her to the Symphony of the Goddesses, which is like the Zelda orchestra. I oh, yeah. love video game music live. It is so good. It's so beautiful. Like, video game music is some of the best, like, well-orchestrated um, performances ever. Like, and, and just, in my opinion, music in general. So I'd love to see it, like, on the big stage and stuff like that. And I think a lot of people are like, nah, that's stupid. Like, we only care about the video games. But music is a huge part of video games, okay? What do you think sets up the ambiance? You know? I think it's a nice break, and... You know, a break from the nonstop action that is the Game Awards. And I would take it over the uh, the Imagine Dragons. Like, the guy had a great voice and everything, but, you know, it's the Game Awards. I was fine with just video game music. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I liked definitely the orchestra better than I did Imagine Dragons, no matter how much I like Imagine Dragons. But I, I think what you said was right. It's like a, it's like a good pace. Um, good break from all the stuff, because it was really rapid fire. Um, yeah. Anything else that you liked about it? Um, I wrote down the word Reggie. I was just really happy to see Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Reginator. Uh, he's no longer a part of the Nintendo Direct, so I look forward to seeing him at the annual Game Awards. And, uh, I wrote that I kind of like the fact that it's just four straight hours of video games. You know, they could throw in commercials for, like, I don't know, Dr. Pepper, like just typical commercials, but instead it's it's video game commercials in between video game trailers, in between video game music. It's just four straight hours of what you want to see. Like yep. commercials, honestly, kind of piss me off <laughs> in, uh, in, in your regular cable. Just like I mute that crap. I don't even want to freaking hear it. <laughs> uh, so I didn't feel that. I don't feel that way with the Game Awards. 
Yeah, I um, guess that's one thing it has going for it is it was, it was really rapid fire and it was literally all video games all the time. Um, but I yeah. think we should definitely talk about the fact that Nintendo wasn't there at all except for those little tiny commercials. Nothing. Yeah, that was probably my my number one dislike. <laughs> we got nothing. Nintendo didn't even show up. Except for like a freaking sizzle reel. It was like, what, two sizzle reels <laughs> of things? I think that the entire show would have been better if Nintendo announced anything. I mean, people would have been more pleased with it. I would have been more pleased with it. It just, it was lame. Because everyone loves Nintendo, man. It's just so good. But <laughs> just from like a marketing standpoint, though, like a lot of gamers and game developers and blah, 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 every, everyone who's involved with gaming, right, was tuning in tonight. And Nintendo was just like, nah, we don't want to put our products in front of you. It just made no sense. Like they could even, like I said before, it doesn't have to be like a new announcement. Just give us something else, something new from something that you've already announced, you know, like actual gameplay or, or a cinematic trailer or just something. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, you know? it was weird that like, I mean, even Pokemon is coming out in like a month. They could have shown something for Pokemon. Or just know, showed man. something from Diamond and Pearl. I mean, we've yeah. seen it a lot, but, like, just literally anything. It was just weird. I don't know why they didn't do that. It was like when, when our boy Doug Bowser came on stage for a minute. It was like, yeah, a little bit of Nintendo. And it's like, wait, where are you going? You just yeah. got here. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> Give us something. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. So, I guess the big takeaway is, for me, I would like to see more, like, behind the scenes of like the games that were nominated or like the games that were winning um or like the studios or like the people who actually like put in the work to do it um you know give us like some behind the scenes or something and nintendo show up next time man <laughs> i don't understand oh also don't shoo the freaking winners off the stage so quickly like they came up there they're like okay thing i want to thank my mom i thank my dad and they're shooting me off goodbye <laughs> Like, geez. That's, that's very true the show was four hours but it was still it still first of all it went over past 10 p.m by like i don't know 10 minutes or something so you could tell that they just had to rush everything they are really just packing that full so i agree i would have yeah. liked to have heard more from the the representatives of each winner mm -hmm. that'd have been nice but i mean overall it was fine it was entertaining and it entertained me for a night right um so yeah, that's all I gotta say. Most of the things I disliked were out of their control. Um, like for instance, overall, it was just a slow year for gaming. I feel like, and the game awards were slow because of it. Um, none of the games that were nominated for Game of the Year were like groundbreaking, must play. Like everybody's talking about it. Like 2017 was a crazy year. I know Breath of the Wild and Odyssey came out that year. I think that was the same year that like Red Dead 2 came out. Like there was just, I could be wrong about that, but there was just a lot, a lot going on in 2017. And, you know, there, I don't feel like there was that game this year or, or those games per se. And yeah, there's nothing Jeff Keighley could have done about that. But something that I do think he could be at fault for is the fact that he just really overhyped the show on Twitter beforehand. Uh, he, he said something like, yeah, there's going to be three to four. Um, like, I don't remember what he said, like triple A game studio announcements or something like that. I mean, I, I don't even remember anything that that of that magnitude. I can't imagine yeah, what he was even talking about. <laughs> But, yeah. I mean, I guess he got people to tune in, so I guess that's all that matters. But, yeah, I agree. A little bit of a disappointment, but entertaining enough. Right. Uh, Yeah, we already talked about which games we're pumped for. But, yeah, definitely Wonder Woman, Star Wars, The Lord of the Rings. Very, very excited for all of that. Mm-hmm. All right, are we done? Are we wrapping up the Game Awards? I think we're wrapping up the Game Awards. Let's put a pin in it till next year. See you next December, Jeff. Not you, Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone else. 2021, let's talk about it. Um, so there were 
I just sat here and talked about how it was a slow year, but let's go ahead and talk about some of the games that came out, some of our favorites, some that looked good that we didn't get to play. Um, I think, yeah, why don't you go ahead and start us off? Let's talk about Nintendo. All right. I will talk about the Nintendo games that came out. I'll just remind everyone which Nintendo games came out this year. Um, first, starting off with Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, which came out in February. Then we have, not all these are Nintendo, but some of these are like Nintendo exclusives or just ones that I found interesting. Um, Persona 5 Strikers, February 23rd. Bravely Default 2, also in February. Then we have Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time in March. Hades, that also in March. That was this year? Oh my yeah. gosh. See? I totally forgot until I actually looked up all of these. Um, oh, have... it's because Crash 4 probably came out on other consoles first. Yeah. Well, Switch gets their stuff late. Gotcha. <laughs> but um, then we have Overcooked, All You Can Eat. Monster Hunter Rise also came out this year. So did New Pokemon Snap. Um, Crypt of the Necro Dancer came out in April. Then Famicom Detective Club. Uh, the Missing Air and Famicom Detective Club, The Girl Who Stands Behind in May. Um, then Subnautica and Subnautica Below Zero, which is one of the games that I wanted, again, to be ported over, and it was. <laughs> um, came out in May. Then we have Miitopia, also in May. Then Shin Megami Tensei 3, Nocturne HD Remaster. Um, Wonder Boy, Asha in Monster World. Game Builder Garage, which I don't hear anyone talking about, but seemed really oh, like a yeah. really interesting concept. <laughs> um, then we have Mario Golf Super Rush, which you have. Yep, spent some good time on that. And Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2, Destroy All Humans in June. And then starting in July, we have Yeez 9, Monster Knox. Love that game. Monster Hunter Stories 2, Wings of Ruin. Um, the Legend of Zelda, Skyward Sword HD. And Chris Tales in July. Again, Pokemon Unite, which I don't know anything about, <laughs> came out. Um, Everything you're saying right now is just like, oh my gosh, this is this has been a really long year. <laughs> it is, and, then, and we keep saying there wasn't a lot of things announced or released. Yeah. I mean, there was. <laughs> we just forgot. And I'm not done. I'm about halfway through. So then in July, again, we have The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles from Capcom, Neo The World Ends With You, and Samurai Warriors 5 on July. All those were on July 27th. Then we have No More Heroes 3 on August 27th, and Sonic Colors Ultimate on September 7th, Warrior Wear Get It Together September 10th, Cruise and Blast, woo, um, September 14th, Diablo 2 Resurrected September 23rd. Hot Wheels Unleashed, again, woo, September 30th. Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania, October 5th. And then on October 8th, we have Metroid Dread. Um, Mario Party Superstars, October 29th. Shin Megami Tensei 5, which I'm excited to get into at some point, November 12th. Uh, then Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl on November 19th. And finally, Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp came out on december 3rd so it's been that, a pretty impressive year i literally did not hear a single soul talk about advance wars when it came out mm-hmm. i Which forgot that was releasing yeah people were so pumped but that's crazy i don't know i i don't know if it got a physical though i think it was only digital but don't quote me on that one uh yeah, yeah. definitely definitely was just digital it's been a big freaking year. I mean, no Zeldas, no like big Marios besides like the port, but I mean, still a pretty big year. There's a lot of stuff to play and there's a lot of stuff to play for a lot of different people. Sports games, racing games, you know, action adventure. Pick your poison. There, were, it, there was at least one game in that category. You know which one I probably wanted to play the most? Uh, WarioWare looks so much, looks like so much fun. I've seen a good amount of gameplay for that game, and I like games that are just high score based, and that just looks like a blast. Have you have you seen any gameplay? I've seen a lot of gameplay, and I've seen like all the mini games. It's like a Mario Party, but like which is fun, wacky little like mini games. It does look very very fun. Yeah, lots of good stuff this year. Ease Nine, I didn't know that was this year. 
Mm-hmm. Skyward Sword feels like it was over a year ago. I know. Crazy. This year's been long. All right, let me uh, let me fill in the gaps with the non Nintendo stuff here. We got Resident Evil Village, Hitman Three. I think you mentioned that. Was that on Switch? Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Hitman Three, It Takes Two, Far Cry Six, Guardians of the Galaxy. Definitely got to play that one. Psychonauts Two, Back for Blood, Life is Strange, True Colors. Tales of Arise was a pretty big one this year. Mm-hmm. Scarlet Nexus. Um, and then I wrote down a bunch of Nintendo ones. You got those already. Was did we like when we were looking at the game awards, was there a not an RPG, best RPG category? Yeah, it was Tales of Arise. That's what I thought, but I don't remember us saying it. I did. Anyways. Um, okay. PlayStation exclusives, I wrote down Deathloop and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart and Returnal. And Xbox, I wrote Forza Horizon 5 and Halo Infinite. Um, and the, the fact that the PlayStation and the Xbox have just turned one year old is pretty nuts because it's still impossible to get one. <laughs> I mean, this is just... This has never happened before, and it's a very Jeez, interesting it's time we're living year? in. It's crazy. Holy and, crap. And we're just three or four months away from the Switch turning five. I which know. Which means we're old. Very old people. Why would you say that? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that reminder. Um, I do also have some events written down that Nintendo had this year because... Nintendo finally started bringing back directs. I mean, 2020 was obviously a weird year for everyone, but there was hardly any directs. It was mostly just like random Twitter drops. Um, So they brought back directs this year. February 17th, Nintendo broadcast the first Nintendo Direct in its original format since September of 2019. (laughs) We were in a direct drought, man. (laughs) Then on June 15th, we had E3 2021. Then August 18th, we had the Pokemon-themed Nintendo Direct. Then again, on September 23rd, we had a regular Nintendo Direct. October 15th, the Animal Crossing New Horizon Direct. And then December 15th, we'll have an Indie World Direct that doesn't include all of the like Indie Worlds and Showcase and whatever in between. But yeah, we got a return to Directs, which is awesome. We should be expecting one next month sometime. Maybe February? So, look forward to that. I am definitely looking forward to that. Um, all right, should we discuss what we're looking forward to in 2022? Do you have anything? I don't have anything. No, I just have 2021 stuff. I guess that's what the episode is titled after all. Yeah, come on, man. It took me like there 12 was... different fonts to find 2021. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of events, uh, there was that PlayStation event at some point, and they announced like Spider Man Two and Wolverine, and that's all I remember. But yeah, very nice. Uh, the only other thing I would mention is this game Starfield, a Bethesda game, um, that was announced like 2020 maybe is still set to come out like I don't know when, but. That's a pretty big game up there with Elden Ring, I think. And it's going to be like a new... I looked at it online. It's described as the first Bethesda universe in 25 years. So they've been playing... You know, you've been playing um, Fallout and... What is the, the Elder Scrolls for like 25 years almost. And yeah, Starfield's going to be the first new universe. So people are hyped for that. Wow. Yeah, I remember that being announced but that was i think that was in 2019 that was a long time ago yeah cool cool well let's talk about our 2021 i have not played a lot of the games that released this year even though i feel like i'm playing video games constantly i don't think you know hannah i just don't think it's a tisk tisk moment 
It is a statistics moment. Come on, man. Get with the times, you boomer. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the games that I played were on the Switch. Yeah, that sounds about right. All right. Well, before... I don't know. Do you have... All right. At the end, I'll ask you what your game of the year is. And okay. then... Save that for last. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. So let's just... Let's just talk about what we've been playing this year. Well, do you want me to give my Nintendo Switch statistics? Oh yeah, my let's breakdown do it. here. Right, oh so yeah, on your, on your I'll try Nintendo to pull mine account, up while you do that. You can do a um a year in review, and it'll show you. It'll tell you all the games that you played on the Switch, um during the year. And so I did that, and I wrote them down. And I'm gonna make you guess. So this <laughs> year, on the Nintendo Switch, how many games do you think I played? Uh, like six. Six? Yes. Only six? No, no, no. I played 16. <laughs> 16 games on the okay. Switch. Last year I played 20, though, so it's definitely a decrease. How many hours do you think I played? Well, there are 16 RPGs for sure, so I'm going to say <laughs> uh, let's go with 200 hours. Ooh, that's very close. Only 170 hours. Gotcha. But that's obviously not including, like, I'm off now. I just got off this week, so I'll obviously be, you know, logging in some more hours. A significant amount of hours this week and next week and all before um, the first. But I've only played 170 hours this year. Last year, I played 217. You can really tell that schools kicked my butt. But and... let's tell the audience how you, you're a big brain and you, you got two TVs side by side now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's actually back to normal now. All of my stuff is displaced. But yeah, there's I have I live by myself, which I probably shouldn't say. But I have my <laughs> normal TV that I have mounted on my wall. And then I have one in the living room that came with the apartment. And it's a much bigger TV and it's very heavy. But I have a shelf right next to my other TV. So I, I you know, I cleared off my gaming shelf and put all my stuff elsewhere and I put my other TV next to my other TV, the big TV next to my mounted TV. And so I was playing Splatoon or Bug Fables or whatever. And I was watching TV at the same time, which I've never done before, by the way. Um, you love to see it. And you went cross-eyed. And I went cross-eyed. And, and the <laughs> bad part is they're both Roku TVs. And so you can control each one with one remote. So I'd like turn up this TV, it would turn up the other TV. I'd turn off this TV, it would turn off both TVs. So it was like really a struggle to get them on at the same time. <laughs> But yeah, I did do that. It was very fun. It's back to normal now, though. But yeah, that was my big brain moment. <laughs> and then my most played games. Can you guess what they are? All right, we got Ease Origin. We got Ease Nine. Uh, uh, uh Luigi's Mansion. And that's it's only it. top three. It's only top three. Okay, well, I'm gonna take off Luigi's Mansion and leave that one blank then. You are kind of right. It's Dragon Quest Builders 2 at 38 hours, Yee's 9, Monster Knox, 33 hours, and Skyward Sword at 32. So Luigi's oh, Mansion nice. did not make the cut. Neither did Yee's Origin. Yee's nice. Origin only took me like seven hours to beat, I think. Oh, wow. That's it's my kind of game right there. Mm-hmm. It was very short. Okay, now I have the hours by month. I won't make you guess all of these. But it's a it's a breakdown per month of how many hours I played. So January, four hours. February, zero hours. <laughs> March, <laughs> zero hours. Oh my gosh. April, 40 hours. May, 18 hours. June, one hour. July, 21 hours. August, 46 hours. September, two hours. October, 16 hours. November, nine hours. And December, 12 hours. What the heck happened in, what was it, April, May? February and March, zero hours. Yeah, but the one that was like 40 hours, what what came out? Oh, Ease? August August was 46 and April was 40. Let's see, I don't know. What came out in April? <laughs> April <laughs> was, ding, ding, ding. None of these. I would not have played any of these in April. I don't know. Good question. <laughs> it was probably Dragon Quest Builders. Um, Let's see, what came out in August? August, 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 August. Um, nope, wouldn't play any of those either. I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. I know I definitely played some Skyward Sword in August because that came out in July. Um, like July 16th. So I probably played that into August. 
Yeah, I don't know. I wish it would tell you, like, by month what you play, but it doesn't. It just says, says the hours. But zero hours. That is really crazy. <laughs> you That's just... not to say that I didn't play on, like, other consoles or anything, but if I'm not playing on the Switch, you know what? I was probably really addicted to RuneScape at that time. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> but you probably played Ease 3 at some point early this year. I did. I played that in January. Oh, okay. I have that written down. Spoiler alert. <laughs> and actually, it says my most active day was Saturday, August 21st. I played nine hours of Yee's 9. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> can't believe it tells you that. <laughs> it's dangerous. only nine hours, though. It could have been worse. Um, and it also says modes. It says I played 160 hours in docked and 10 hours in handheld. That makes sense. The only reason I play in handheld is when I'm on the airport. Or like an airplane or like in an airport um that's cool so yeah that was my statistics 16 games though that's not bad not that i completed nice. that many but i played yeah. that many at least but yeah that was my statistics then i have some games that i remember playing this year but do you have any statistics you want to share does xbox do fun i've statistics? played 21 games absolutely smearing my 19 games from 2020 smearing <laughs> Uh, I guess it's because, I don't know, I thought I only played Animal Crossing last year, so that's crazy. <laughs> uh, 159 hours, as opposed to 442 from Animal Crossing days. Whoa. Most played oh, games this whoa. year, the collection of mana, I logged 53 hours. That can't be right. How is that possible? Did you pause and walk away? Yeah, that must have been it. That's that's lame that it counts that. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of games do that. Like I think it I think half of that was how long it took me to beat Trials of Mana. So you're so... lying about your hours. You're a liar. Yeah, I guess I am. <laughs> you better take thirty hours a leg. Uh, Super Nintendo Entertainment System, 28 hours. That's probably accurate because I do spend a lot of time on that. And then Mario Golf Super Rush for 20 hours. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Now let's slice that by months. I also had zero hours in February. How about that? Really? I won't go through them all, but the top month was June with 34 hours. I think that's when... Mario Golf came out. Yeah, May, June, July, I, I put in almost all my hours. Well, that makes sense. That's over the summer. Yeah, but I'm not in school, so it's always summer for me. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. I just work. Your most active day was Saturday, May 8th. 10 hours on... <laughs> Wait. I That's played even for worse. 10 hours. <laughs> It says I played for 10 hours, but six of them were on Switch Online SNES. I wonder if it's another case of me pausing it or if I actually did that. Mm. Good question. All right. 119 hours docked and 41 hours handheld. Can't imagine spending 40 hours in handheld mode, man. Bro, what are you doing with your Switch over there? I don't understand. <laughs> Will you walk away and like go eat dinner or like go mow the lawn or what? Mow the lawn. Uh, anything else interesting on this list? Hope you had a blast. Thank you again. It's All also right. like go buy some games. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some advertisements. All right, let me close that. All right, what's next on the agenda here? All right, I was just going to talk about, like, what games I remember playing. All right, sweet. Some of the I'm highlights. Ready. All right, so some of the highlights you mentioned, um, Luigi's Mansion 3, that one was really fun. Um, and then we played Donkey Kong Country 3 together this year, right? This year? That happened this year, right? Oh, I have my list up. Let me see. Yes, it was in May. It wasn't even that long ago. It was in May. Maybe that's what dumb. I was doing in May. Yeah, that's, that's where those hours came from. 18 hours, yeah. We beat that, and then I believe we started Breath of Fire, the first one. Yeah. We never beat that one. Then, of course, E's Origin, which I talked about. E's 9, which I talked about. Kirby Air Ride, which I talk about all the time. <laughs> um, 
Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2. Breath of the Wild, of course, because I cannot stop playing that game. Even though I already beat it. A hundred percent of it. Then we have Skyward Sword, Dragon Quest Builders 2, Splatoon 2, um, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, Yeast 3 on the SNES. Then Final Fantasy Adventure from the Secret of Mana Collection that I will never play again. Um, <laughs> moving Out, Overcooked 1 and 2, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, because again, can't stop myself from playing that game. Spyro 1 from the Ignited Trilogy, or Reignited Trilogy, and then Bug Fables and the Everlasting Sapling. It's the only ones that I can remember, but I'm sure I played other ones. What about Tony Hawk? Did you not dive into that? Tony Hawk. I said Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2. Oh, okay. <clears throat> oh, well, this, I don't, this probably doesn't count, but I also went to Dave & Buster's <laughs> and played a whole <laughs> bunch of video games there. <laughs> and you went into that nerd's basement and played VR. <laughs> That was this year. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes, I did do that. Yeah, you're right. I did play those. There's, okay, just and on the topic of Dave and Buster's, me and my friend, we were playing this game. I don't remember what it's called, but it's like one of those big shooty ones where you like get inside of the thing and it's like a whole like experience. It's not like scary or anything like that, but yeah. the whole thing, your whole shtick is like you're going up and down like this building and it's like an elevator. So you like you get in the elevator, you go to the next floor, you fight some more monsters, and you go down the elevator, blah blah blah. But like, <laughs> like an elevator, like the screen closes off, like you're in an elevator, and then like elevator music plays for like ten minutes. I mean, not ten minutes, like ten seconds. You get to like dance around, and then you were like back into the action. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> but we spent like freaking thirty dollars on that game because it's one of those games where it's like you die really easily, and then you got swipe, spend like ten more dollars, and then wow. keep going, keep going. It's one of those, but it was really fun. Yeah, that was my random tangent. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, you're good. Uh, I've beaten 40 games and counting this year. I'm not going to go through them all. You're in luck. But I will Thank mention God. some. I'm just going to go through here. You're a jerk. You know that? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Ninja Gaiden was the first game I beat this year. Hardest game. One of the hardest games I've ever played in my life. Pat on the back for me. Gosh, that was this year? January 18th. Oh, my gosh. Yoshi's Story, my Christmas gift from Hannah, one Yay! of them. That was I a good time. Game. I think I should play that again soon. That was a good time. It's very fun. Uh, Tony Hawk HD remasters were both freaking awesome. Played my first Ratchet and Clank this year. That was cool. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to lump some the word Castlevania because I've played a lot of Castlevania uh but definitely the my game of the year like that didn't release this year necessarily was castlevania symphony of the night i had an absolute blast with that game and yeah it it lived up to the hype like i've said multiple times before really great game lives up to the hype nice very nice seven halo games i did the first kingdom hearts the first gravity rush um Trials of Mana was cool. Mario Golf Super Rush was not a good campaign. It, was, it wasn't it was bad, but it was very strange, and I would not recommend it. <laughs> uh-huh. Aliens Infestation on the DS. Pretty sweet game. Well, yeah. We were a little about Metroidvania that. action. Oh, a sleeper hit for me. Katamari was so fun. Mm. That's kind of my right? Yes, ma'am. Oh my gosh. I haven't talked about one of my favorite games of 2021, freaking Scarlet Nexus. Um, I voted it for RPG of the Year because it's the only RPG I played on that list. But I mean, I think everybody should give it a chance. It was a good time. It's on Xbox Game Pass. You don't have to spend any money. It's on Game and- Pass. That's right. And yeah, I wish I wish that I could give you this game on the Switch. And if it ever comes to the Switch, I will gift it to you. Thank you. You know I'm down to play that. I love me some RPGs. I'm just jealous that you got to play it and I didn't. I know. I wanted it to be like an, an Astral Chain experience where we both played that one and loved it. Dude, I love Astral Train. I cannot wait for them to tease us again <laughs> and then actually just be like Bayonetta 4. What was that event? Was that a Nintendo Direct? 
Uh, I believe that was the latest Nintendo Direct, yeah. The one that happened in September. We really didn't talk about Metroid Dread, probably because you haven't played it. But, um... I know. What is your number one game of the year? <sighs> My number one game of the year that came out this year, it's gotta go to Yeez 9 Monster Knox. I love that game. That was so good. I love any RPG like that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeez just has like a special place in my heart. It's not... I don't like it. That's not true. I... It's just a different experience than like Xenoblade Chronicles, which was like the first RPG that I ever got into. And Yeez 9 is very close to that. It's just very different. Um, but I love them almost equally. But Xenoblade Chronicles 2 just edges it out. But yeah, I'm going to go with any, like an RPG every time. Unless the Zelda comes out, which I'm going to go with that every time. Skyward Sword did come out this year, but I was kind of, I don't know if I would. It did come out, but it's like, it's, it's an old game. It came out 10 years ago. Right. You know? So I don't know if I could really call that my game of the year, but Ease 9, that's mine. What about you? Yeah, I pretty much associate Ease with you. Every time I see those games now, I just think of you. And I'm happy that they're bringing those games to Switch for you. It's pretty cool. I'm glad you're enjoying them. I am very um, much enjoying them. I have to give Halo Infinite the game of the year. It didn't make the cut for like the timeline of the game awards per se, but I'm counting it because it's still released this year. Um freaking love that game campaign multiplayer awesome game they halo's always been a level based game and this one is straight up open world and i'm just having a blast doing the side quests like typically when i play games like this i just want to do the main stuff and finish it because i have other crap to do with my life but i don't feel that way at all i'm not rushing through it i'm just exploring the world and doing the side quests the way video games are meant to be played <laughs> see that's that's what it was like for me breath of the wild right yeah i had to do everything yeah you you're one of the few people that can say that because you did everything i did everything <laughs> <laughs> i did everything i put 500 hours in that game or like 450 or something like that yep yeah definitely belongs on your resume for like being able to get all the Korok <laughs> seeds. I would hire you for that. Oh, thank you. It was fun. It's like a little treasure hunt. A little Easter egg hunt. <laughs> all right. What do you have for us on uh, the, the Nintendo sales data? Oh, okay. So this is really interesting. So Nintendo's, their, their quarterly thing is like from March to March. So they haven't really done like their whole year thing. Um... But as of September 30th, which I guess is pretty close, they have, they updated like their sales numbers um, for actually all their consoles, but no, it's not like the Wii U's flying off the shelves for the GameCube. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so Nintendo Switch, the hardware is up to 92.87 million units. It is just behind the Wii sales of 101.63 million units for a no home way. console. No way. And 154.02 was the 3DS. So the Switch is definitely going to surpass those. It's just a matter of time. Especially There's no way it was 3DS. It had to be DS, right? Oh, yeah, D DS, sorry. Okay. It was DS, yeah, not 3DS. But I'm sure the 3DS sold a lot. I just don't know where it is. Oh, yeah, 3DS only sold 75. So, yeah, you're correct. But the Switch is definitely going to pass the Wii, and it's definitely going to pass the DS at some point. Because it's going to have a gajillion iterations and they're all going to count it as one single thing. Right. Well, you know, they're coming up on year five. Is it, is it going to be time for a new hardware sometime soon? Not I mean, an upgrade, but a new There's console. already the light in the SwoLED <laughs> Switch <laughs> OLED model. The SwoLED model. Um, but it also has it also has the uh, hardware sales, sales, which is 681 million hardware sales that's like games and stuff i mean software sales sorry oh okay. that's like that's like games and stuff well that's crazy though you love to see it that's crazy um there's also a bunch more stuff here there's like all these sorts of like fun little graphs um and it shows you like it even shows you for region too it's like japan or like europe um yeah I'm looking we, at won't, it. we won't go into all of that but um gives you like a year by year breakdown but we don't really need to do that 
Um, yeah, I just thought the uh, amount of consoles that it sold. I mean, that's as of September, so we still have November. Plus, we have Black Friday and all of that on top of that. Yeah. I don't know. Is it hard to get a Switch right now? Mm, um, I'd like to say no, but it's possible, especially because it's the holiday season. Well, just on top of all the uh, the delays and stuff that we've been experiencing for over a year now. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Interesting. Mm-hmm. All right. Box, Ooh, okay. I have all right. I have hardware sales. I mean, software sales in the United States and hardware sales. So hardware sales, hardware. Wow. God, it's late. Okay. <laughs> hardware sales. Um, in the United States, the U.S. of A. Um, we have just as the regular switch, we have seven hundred and seven ten thousand units. I don't know why it says ten thousand units. Uh, um, I just think it means thousand units. I don't know. That's weird. Ten thousand units. Okay, well you can do the math on that one. <laughs> seven hundred seven ten thousand units. Of just the regular switch, and then we have four hundred nine ten thousand units of the switch light. That's just in America. I'm only going to do the America for now. Um, let's see here. In terms of games sold in two thousand twenty one, as of September thirtieth, the Nintendo Switch has had two hundred and eighty two titles released, non Nintendo exclusive, and nine Nintendo. Um, titles themselves. That's crazy. Physical games? Um, no, it doesn't specify whether it's physical or not, but that's still a lot of games. Where is this number? It's on the, uh, it's on the graph. Graph chart. Graph chart? Alright, I'll just take your word for it. Oh, wait. This one says of, as of March 2021. Oh my gosh, it's even more. Oh, yeah. Holy moly. Oh, that's just in Japan, too. Oh, my goodness gracious. Okay, so in America, we have 335 titles. Um, and then we have 13 Nintendo titles. Dang, that's crazy. This is a fun graph. I Should we link this? This is, this is very interesting <laughs> to look at. Yeah, we can do that. Oh, number Let's of see. titles released. There it is. Yeah, you see what, I, you see what I'm looking at here? <laughs> so total 20 as of March dang it's still of March oh no it's says September September 30th of 2021 the amount of units sold is 2,883 10,000 units <laughs> that's such a weird thing for them to do I don't know why they did that <laughs> Wow. Anyway, yeah. So Nintendo's doing fairly well right now, as you can see. Yeah, I just thought some of those sales figures were interesting. I wonder what it'll be once they update it after the holidays. It's, it's always, always weird. Support looking at numbers on this podcast. It's always interesting looking at the numbers, the facts. But yeah, that's pretty much it. We should link this because this is very interesting. Better write a note, otherwise I will not remember. This is a. This is a Nintendo website, so it's factual. Only the Only facts Nintendo on the websites. Unlockable podcast. Yeah. Only the facts. Hannah, is there anything else you want to talk about before uh, we get to our Instagram questions and answers? Oh, yeah. No, I think I think we pretty much covered it. All right. Well, if you are following Hannah, then you probably saw today earlier that she said, Hey, what... What did you ask, Hannah? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. It's very your easy. Your favorite topic, game of 2021. Topic. Yeah, your favorite game that came out in 2021. So, <clears throat> we have quite a few answers here. I asked it earlier today. Usually, I let it sit for 24 hours so I can get more responses, but it doesn't matter. Um, 95% of you <laughs> said Metroid Dread. <laughs> um, <laughs> which is, I mean, there's like at least 100 here that just say Metroid Dread. I'm not going to read out all you guys. I'm so sorry. Um, 
Then we have a lot of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Brilliant, or no, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. And then we have Koning 038, say Ratchet and Clank are Rift Apart. That's the only one that says that. You see, you hear um, that, guys? If you want to be on the podcast, you have to stand out, be original. Yep. <laughs> and then we have the on a fun gamer says Mass Effect Legendary Edition. I nice. don't know if that came out this year, but if it, it did, did. I saw it. It did? Yeah. Okay. I'm just taking your guys' word for it. Then we have Ben Culex 383 Quake Remastered. Wow. I don't know. Mm-hmm. There's no way. I'll Google it. Keep going. Okay. Then we have F.E. Knuckle or Iron Knuckle. Says Resident Evil, what's V I I I 13? No, eight. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> I know Roman numerals. <laughs> um, then we have Alejandro Morales, Morales, um, 1104. Says Shimigami Tensei 5. So somebody liked it. I'm Only very excited to start playing it. Only one person, yeah. Wow, but yeah, those are some of your guys' uh, games of the year, which is very interesting. But, yeah, seriously, there's so many Metro Dreads. It's not even funny. <laughs> Metro Dread. Quake Metro Remaster Dread. definitely came out this year. I heard nothing about it. Did it really? Oh, well, see? Now you know. You learn things here. Thank you for teaching us. You learn things. All right. What is our question? What are we asking the audience at the end of this episode? <laughs> Uh, well, we can ask what was you- well. Okay, we can say what we can ask. What was your favorite game that you played? Doesn't necessarily have to come out in twenty twenty one, but what that you played this year? Yeah, you know, if, if you're a retro out, gamer, if you if you played it in December of twenty twenty, I don't want to freaking hear about it. We but only want to know what you played this year. At any time, you don't even have to beat it. Just what did you play? What did you enjoy? No mobile games. Don't comment with Clash of Clans. Oh boy, Clash of Clans. That was my <laughs> jam for the longest time. But yeah, yeah no I played Clash that of Clans, no Fortnite. Like that's good if you play Fortnite. No Rocket League, okay? <laughs> if you played that doesn't count. You can comment Rocket League. No, you can't. <laughs> Kirby Air Red. How about that? You can how about you can comment RuneScape? That'll work. Thank you guys so much for listening to episode 23 of the Unlockable Podcast. Uh, I have one announcement. Today, when I walked in the door to my house, I saw a package, and it said Amazon. And I opened the package, and <laughs> it was my freaking brand new refurbished capture card that I am going to be using Ooh. to stream. So... I've had like, I don't know, eight streams over the course of two years, and that's lame. And they're always after people are dead and asleep, right? Like freaking 10 p.m. I start, and depending on your time (laughs) zone, that sucks. But I want to create a at least once a week streaming schedule, and yeah, it's not just going to be Xbox anymore because I have the capture card. So if I want to play some freaking Game Boy Advance or GameCube games or whatever, I can do that. And yeah, so keep an eye out for that. Definitely going to announce it, like what my streaming schedule will be whenever I figure it out. But yeah, come hang out. That's very exciting. Where can the people find you, Hannah? Game Girl Advance SP on Instagram. Don't forget the SP. Yeah, come on. I can't believe you started (laughs) off this podcast forgetting SP. It is a real mouthful when you say it out loud. Well, we just gotta, we gotta break it up. Game Girl Advance SP. <laughs> you got that. It's not that hard. You know, I had multiple people tell us that we should be doing like a an episode in person while while you're here in Texas. Hmm. I don't think we have time for that. We got a lot of game hunting to do. If yeah, if it wasn't during Christmas when I'm gonna have a bunch of family up there anyway, it probably wouldn't work. But if I come over in summer, I'm down. All right. We can even turn on the camera. Whoa. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Don't <laughs> don't quote me on that one. I might back out. But are we gonna have yeah. two microphone arms? I could bring my arm up there, but I think <laughs> one would be okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. 
Uh, all right, I'm at Bird Dog Gaming on all social media. Thanks for listening. If you made it this far, thanks a lot. You're awesome. Agreed. We'll see you next time. See ya.